Hi. Hello. Karen. Yeah. Can I can I make you co-host? You can. Um it's gonna shut my lines. So I've, I've made you co-host because um, I'm still waiting for my room to be free. Oh. <laughs> so I'm sitting in an open office, which I don't want to do. Yeah. So, um, the room's supposed to be free from 11, but I should have booked it for before 11. That would have been sensible, wouldn't it? <laughs> there's some people in there, so I'm going to have to kick them out fairly shortly. But yeah. hi, Matthew. Hi. So um, we've got one person in the waiting room two people in the waiting room and us so i'm leaving them in the waiting room at the moment yeah um but hopefully oh here's lisa i'll let lisa in i'll make her co-host as well just in case anything happens then you've got control as well yeah hi lisa mm -hmm. good morning Morning. Hi. So you can hear me and I can hear yep. you. That's all good. Hi, Elisa. Hi, Matthew. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. Good. So we, when we, when I do the welcome, shall I ask um, board members just to introduce themselves? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Is that I've got a Liz in the waiting room. I think our Liz wasn't coming, was she? No, okay. I was just saying, Lisa and Matthew, um, I'm waiting for a room, which I'm gonna have to kick somebody out of in a minute. So I'm in an open office. So I've made you all co-host so you can take over and let people in and things like that whilst, um, whilst I go and shout at somebody. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, but we've only got three people waiting, so um, people tend to like sort of drift in and don't they? So yeah. at the last minute, they never arrive on time. I'm just looking at the list, Dan. I don't see another Liz. Oh, I see an Elizabeth. That's okay. That's maybe Elizabeth. But our Liz definitely couldn't come. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got four people. There's a couple of people sent apologies at the last minute, um, and then a couple of other people have booked on. So I think there must, you know, the, you know, there, there must have been a reserve list or something like that automatically enabled. And so I think all the places are filled. It's not quite who we um, imagined. Unfortunately, I couldn't assign. Uh, rooms beforehand because Zoom didn't recognise all the email addresses. Oh. Um, I don't know why, but it, it just kept telling me don't recognise this as a real email address. So, um, so what I'll do is when we get to that, I'll randomly assign and then I'll move us to make sure. So we'll just do it when it comes. Okay. And it, it might be quite random, but I'll try and then make sure one of us is in each of the rooms and Dave if he comes. So we might just do four groups or something. That might be the easiest way to do it. Okay. Um, right, is it okay if I just um, mute and stop my, and, and close down and try and go get my room? Is that all right? Should I start like, Over people? I know, should we hang on? 
to you, Karen. You're in charge. <laughs> <laughs> it's 11, isn't it? So I better let people in, I think. Yeah. Welcome to people joining us. <laughs> Hi there. We're just letting it, waiting for everybody to uh, to join and then we'll make a start. Just let you know that we are recording the event today, so hopefully that's okay with everyone. See so Anne's back in the room. <laughs> Hi, Anne. We've got like about 11 people joined us so far, but we have got 40 books onto this event. So if it's okay, we will just give it another minute or so. Um, just get give everyone a chance to get in. That's my cat meowing in the background, if anyone can hear that. He always does this when we have a, we have a scene. I meet myself temporarily and then you don't have to listen. Okay, I don't want time to slide away too much because we have only got an hour today. So I think we will just, uh, we'll make a start and let other people join uh, as and when. Um, so I'm Karen Smith. I'm one of the directors of the Social Audit Network. Um, I also have my own business, Turn Up The Value. I do sort of social impact consultancy as well. So um, it's great to be hosting the event today. And thank you for joining us. Uh, we could just do a quick introduction from the other uh, Social Audit Network uh, directors. And then uh, other people, if you'd, you'd like to introduce yourselves in the chat, that would be great. We'll make use of the chat function today. So um, so please do feel free to just, just uh, put your name and, and the organisation you're from in the chat and then we all know who's here. Um, so could I hand over to Lisa, first of all, to introduce yourself? Hey, hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Lisa McMullen. Um, I'm a fellow director of the Social Audit Network and in the day job, if you like, I um, work at the Women's Organization. We're an economic development agency supporting women to set up and grow their own businesses and promote employability. That's me. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, that was drilling starting in the background. Why do these things always happen? Um, Anne, could I ask you to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Anne Lisko in an echo chamber uh, in Manchester at the Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Um, that's my day job, but I'm also a director of the Social Audit Network. Thanks Anne, and um, we've got Dave I think has joined us. If you'd like hey, to introduce everybody. yourself Dave, uh, yeah, hi. I'm Dave Furs, um, I, I work in a local charity in Buckinghamshire, Community Transform. Um, currently working uh, a lot with the Ellsby Garden Town, setting up a number of community projects there. I've been involved with uh, SAN since I think first contact was 2010 and a director for about eight years. 
Dave. Our charity um, just works to uh, promote community development um, across Buckinghamshire, um, particularly in, in the more deprived areas, the, the pockets of deprivation within the affluence of, of Buckinghamshire. Thank you, Dave. Uh, and finally, Matthew. Hi, everybody. Yep, Matthew Lanham. I'm the uh, chair of the Social Audit Network and uh, been a director for a number of years. Um, day job is chief executive of the Neuromuscular Centre, a charity working with muscular dystrophy. A little more of that in a bit. Thank you. So, uh, so today we're going to just give you a, an introduction to social accounting and audit. Um, we're going to start with, uh, with a presentation from Anne uh, on that, and then we're going to move into a case study with Matthew, who's going to tell us a little bit more about how they've, how his organisation have approached social accounting. And then we're going to give you a chance to ask some questions, and then we're going to go into uh, some breakout rooms. So it's a speedy whiz through uh, social accounting and audit this morning, just for an hour, and um, we'll get you finished for 12. Um, so yeah, we'd like to start by asking Anne to, uh, to give her little introduction to social accounts and audit, thanks. Brilliant, thank you, Karen. And, and Karen, could if anybody else comes into the waiting room, could you let them in? That's perfect, thank you. Hi, everyone. So um, I'm going to, if that's okay, I will share my screen. We'll send around the slides afterwards. Um, but the, the purpose of this session, and I will be going quite quickly, is just to give you an introduction. Um, to what we what we mean by social accounting and audit when we're talking about it in the social audit network. My background is I, I used to work for um, a voluntary sector organization doing social accounting um, and have worked as an auditor as well. So um, some of the things I'm saying are based on you know uh, longer term experience. But I'll share I'll share my screen now. Hopefully, okay. Um, and right, we all okay with the slides now? Great, okay. So I'm just going to um, talk about principles and practice of social accounting and audit. So in the social audit networks approach to social accounting and audit, it's a logical and flexible framework. So what it's not is a tool, it's a framework for thinking about social impact and then accounting for it and presenting it in a way that can be verified or audited. So the framework is there to prove, improve and account, which is a sort of um, a three word phrase that we use a lot in the social audit network. So trying to prove the impact in, a, in social, environmental, and economic performance and impact. So proving that, improving it, so embedding it within your organization and doing it periodically over and over again to try and improve your performance. And I hope this is something Matthew will pick up on because you know he, his organization has been doing social accounting audit for quite a number of years. Um, and then, being accountable to those stakeholders. So being accountable to, the, to your customers, your funders, your clients, your staff, your management committee, but being accountable for it as well. We believe that's extremely important part of being um, a social economy organization. So there are, in order to, to um, put structure into the social accounting process, there are um, the following eight principles. And these are used to, um, as I say, put structure into the framework, but also they're used in the audit or verification process. So we ask people to be clear why they are doing it, that they're really clear what the scope is. So what is included in your social accounting? What's in, what's out? Who are you talking to? You, let, you engage the stakeholders. So your social accounting involves facts and figures about social impact, but also the qualitative information that's gathered from engaging with the stakeholders in the work that you do. And then that you determine materiality. And by that, I mean what's actually important. 
So you're measuring what matters to people, what matters to the stakeholders and what matters in terms of, say, environmental performance. But you're also able to report that cause and effect. So what you're saying it is actually true. It is the material. And then you use comparison. So you, you ask yourself, so what? What does this mean? And you put in context and comparators around your social accounting so that, again, it, it, it makes it meaningful because you're, you're thinking, and it might be all you can do is measure against your own performance last year. Because, you know, it, it is going to, it, it, it might be one thing that you think of as a challenge to make comparisons because every organization is different. It's working in different communities. It's working with different stakeholders. But we do feel it's important that you make some forms of comparisons or benchmarks. And the, the, seventh, the sixth principle is that you are transparent in what you're doing. So a good social auditor will look at a wonderful social impact report and say, hang on, did everybody think you were perfect? Did everybody think you were wonderful? Did you get any negative feedback in your stakeholder engagement? I think we need to think about honesty and transparency as part of this process. Um, our, our founder, John Pierce, wrote a book about learning from failure. And I think it's really important to understand what works and what doesn't work in your social accounting. Our seventh principle would be that you get independent verification of your social accounting. And we have a process and we have a register of auditors that we use and that you embed it into the business process of your organization. So this is the, the whole uh, social accounting and audit process on one page, and it focuses around those four questions. So I'll go through those. They're, they're sort of the main white blobs in the middle of this. Like I say, it's probably, probably too so small to see on your screen, but we will send the slides around. The other important um, principle in this is that it is repeated so that you're thinking about social accounting and audit as part of your business planning cycle and that you do do it over and over again, not necessarily every year, but you do do it and you do learn from it and you do prove and prove account. So before we start, think it through. Um, in our prove and prove account training, we do ask people who are thinking of doing social accounting to just understand what it is they're getting themselves into assess what they've already got in terms of data and information. Some people start the social accounting without gathering any new information. They just use what they've got already. Deciding whose job it is to do this and what training you might need and what resources they might need and that you have a mandate for doing it. I think we found in practice that just starting it um, without those things in place, you're not necessarily going to get very far or you might have to go backwards. So the first question is, what's the difference that we want to make? So you, you clear what is the vision, mission, objectives, and values, objectives, and activities or, uh, that your organization has. So what is it you're setting out to do? Who are you doing it with? So who are the stakeholders in your organization? So by stakeholders, I'm talking about the, you know, the um, perhaps your service users or beneficiaries but also internal stakeholders like staff, volunteers, uh, board members, trustees, whoever. But mapping those out in the first place helps you decide which one's the most important to talk to. So who is it important to talk to, to know whether you are delivering the vision, the mission, and the values and the objectives of your, your organization? I think the other point maybe to make at this stage is, uh, um, this is a tool to be used by an organization, not necessarily on a project by the organization. So it's about, a, it's effectively a business management tool, not just a way of measuring the impact that a specific project has had. So the uh, principles talk about defining the scope. So what's the time period of your social accounting? It's very similar to financial accounting, which might be done on a sort of annual basis. So what's the period that you're collecting the information for? 
what's in your social accounts and what's not in your social accounts. Are you covering the whole organization or part of the organization? Are you covering all of your organizational objectives or are you just looking at some of the things that you're doing? How detailed are you going to be? Are you just going to speak to a small number of stakeholders first time round, Or as I mentioned, are you just going to use the information you've already got? So it's really important you have a clear plan before you start doing anything. And then what's the difference that we're making? So once you've got the plan, in a way, this is the long bit because this is the bit where you collect the data over a year or over a two year period. You do the engagement with the stakeholders and you think about how you might include measures of environmental and economic impacts. And you also start thinking about what are the comparisons we, comparisons we might want to use? So looking at, um, is there local data? Are there um, standards that we might be adhering to in our work? Or is there just information from your, your last social accounts that you might want to use? We also think about, uh, we have an, uh, a document we use um, in social accounting and audit. In fact, I can mention that now, but we, we do publish a guide and we publish a lot of, you know, um, uh, questionnaires and uh, worksheets and tips and hints to help people at the different stages. But one of the documents we publish is called a key aspects checklist, which allows you to think about your organization's work um, in and the social value or the um, economic, social and governance um, measures that you might be using and helps you analyze your data. So thinking about, you know, what are you doing internally to your organization that's having an impact as well as what you're doing externally. So in terms of the final step is how do we know that we're making a difference? Um, this is where we would have the, your accounts independently verified. So there are different options in terms of audit. So we um, use something called a social audit panel, which is um, chaired by a professional chair, but would involve stakeholders in your organization and a dialogue, a roundtable dialogue um, with um, people that you might want to influence or people that you might be working with in your organization and actually make it a constructive audit process and a learning audit process, not a sort of judgmental process. And then after that, embed and publish. So we um, have organizations that provide case studies or social accounts published on our website, but also we would encourage organizations to publish their own social accounts um, to be accountable to their stakeholders, but then also maybe to use them in, in their marketing or in uh, other work that the organization is doing. So I've nearly finished, but just to flag up, when we're talking about social accounting, we do include environment and economic impacts. So, I mean, I've done training in social accounting and all of it, and people have sort of said, surely this is just social accounting. So we don't need to do the environment. We don't have any, you know, we don't, um, we don't have any direct work to embed, embed uh, to um, benefit the environment, but we think it's really important that you do think about the, envir uh, the environment and, you, and we've got some tools like the Green Office Checklist that you might want to use in that. And then there's online tools that you might want to use as well. And given, you know, um, you know, sort of focus on um, climate crisis, focus on the sustainable development goals, focus on ESG and things like that. Absolutely vital, important that you include this in your social accounting. So just in summary, it's a framework that can include different tools. It's embedded into the work of your organization and runs alongside your financial accounts. But it reports on social, environmental and economic performance and impact. There's something, as I say, that we believe empowers the organization because it's embedded within the work that you do and allows you to be account accountable to all your stakeholders. Finally, that independent verification is crucial to actually prove that value 
Um, I did a piece of work where I was looking at, you know, what sort of organisations do produce social impact reports, and a lot of them are not ones that, you know, you would think were particularly ethical. So the social impact report is a little bit of a sort of, um, it's marketing, it's, it's promotion, it's not really ethical, it's not necessarily true, it's not necessarily verified or audited. Okay, thank you, Karen, I'll stop sharing. Um. Thanks, Anne. That's lovely. Um, yeah, thank you. That's it's it's very hard to condense. Uh, you know that there's two days worth of training that you know fully explain social accounting and audit. But that's just to give you a little bit of an insight into some of the principles and some of the key areas that we look at. Um, I'd just like to invite Matthew now to um, to give you a, an idea of how this works in practice with a bit of a case study. Lovely. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Anne. Um, hi, everybody. Um, so the charity that I run, the Neuromuscular Centre, works with people who have uh, neuromuscular conditions, muscular dystrophy. Uh, but I, I'm not going to talk about our work particularly. Uh, I really just try and pull out some, I suppose, some tips, some thoughts, some ideas and some experiences from uh, 15 years that we as a charity have been using social accounting and audit uh, as a, a, an integral part of the way we, we run our organization, but also how we show the impact of what we do. So we're working with people who have complicated long-term progressive conditions um, in our case, these are muscle weakening conditions. And they come with a, a whole raft of physical, uh, emotional relationship challenges. Um, and uh, the challenge for us was, well, how can you show you're doing good? Or, you know, what, what is the positive impact of what you do? Um, when the people who are accessing your services are inevitably physically declining and that's you know it's a progressive condition so you there is a physical decline um and yet our work is seeks to reduce the the speed and and uh severity with which people's physical uh condition declines so it's that's a really, you know, straight away you're into quite a hard thing to show the impact. Um, and, and I say this only be, not, not for sympathy, but because most of us working in the sorts of organisations that we're in think that the measuring of impact, well, it's too difficult for us. You know, but very often uh, our organisations shy away from measuring impact because we are well it's too different the people we work with the type of thing we do it's too nebulous it's too needs too much nuance it's too complicated um and i i just i you know give a perspective i don't think it is too complicated um and so we started doing social accounting and audit way, way back in uh, 2006. Um, and up until then, we'd really just used case studies to demonstrate the value of what we did. And of course, they're not that valid. You, know, you can drive a coach and horses through a couple of case studies. You know, you show me that what these two people think, but what about the other 74 that you talk about? Um, and so we kind of just jumped in and started asking people, well, what, what's the impact of coming to NMC or having some connection with NMC, NMC Neuromuscular Center, sorry to use shorthand. Um, and the first thing to say is how, in, how useful it is to spend time analyzing your stakeholders and talked about that. And at various times in various organizations, we get a bit 
over focused on our funders demands for information and that may kind of resonate with you um, and it analyzing your stakeholders and having those discussions about stakeholders that Anne talks about reminds you of the pecking order of stakeholders you know who are the people that we're here to help or support um, right so clearly pretty much in any way you cut it they are always top of the tree and the feedback that you can glean from the people who you're trying to help is the paramount thing and often that gives you and it certainly has for us over the years gives you a sense of proper independence you keeping your funders at a distance um, in terms of making decisions about what's the most important thing for the organization going forward and that's really the, the improve element of, uh, of what social accounting is all about um, improve is driven from what your prime stakeholders feedback is uh, and, and that's the people that you you setting out to help um, so we're in the middle of surveying all of our folks at the moment in everybody in our community um, yes it's paper uh, we find that we get a much better response um, when giving people a paper survey and getting them to sit down when they're at the center and do it rather than taking it away or doing it online uh, or, or promoting it by email that just suits our particular constituency um, and uh, what have i learned about doing these surveys over the years they're never the same we always start from scratch we never start with last year's um, and tend to do it in a kind of couple of hours brainstorm and push it straight out. We don't spend a lot of time faffing about over the ins and outs of the design of a form. So, you know, so if there are a hundred questions in there, I don't know how many there are, um, uh, you know, a couple of them won't work, but, we, you know, we're the sort of organization, well, that'll do, you know, we'll just give it a go. Let's not agonize over design of surveys. Um, you'll surprise yourself. You'll pull out, pull out some amazing headline statistics that form the basis of, a, of a, a really positive script for your team to talk about your organization in a way that you never previously had. People might have been really warm about it and said, we're great, you know. Um, but then suddenly you hear people at all levels of the organization quoting a statistic. Oh, did you know the neuromuscular center? 95% of people, we keep them out of hospital yeah. and, and things like that, that you, I can't overestimate the power that that has, uh, that unleashes within an organization. Um, Social audit, the social audit day, the social audit panel, that's the best bit. So I, I came up with a bit of a, uh, a John F. Kennedy paraphrase, you know, think not about the price of doing social audit, think about the value because it is the best bit. And yes, okay, there is a price associated with doing a, a social audit panel and having a social audit day, but, I can't tell you the value that brings into the organization. And uh, uh, you might want to ask me about that. So, I, I, but it's just a massive opportunity to be hugely influential with some people uh, that perhaps you draw into that panel who you might not otherwise get the opportunity to uh, immerse in your organization for a day. Um, it is important that social accounting, in my opinion, it just becomes part of the drumbeat of the organization. And, uh, you know, it's something that isn't just a, 
a thing that comes out of the drawer once a year. You know, it's, you're talking about it all year round. You're storing, earmarking data, you're earmarking its chunky bits of feedback that you've had throughout the year uh, and putting them in the, in the pot of things from which you're going to do your, produce your draft social accounts. Um, uh, yeah, I think I'm, uh, that's my time. Um, it's a bit of a, a whistle stop all over the place, but you'll, you'll sense my immense enthusiasm for this uh, framework, not a tool. Uh, I learn every day, and Anne said that, and uh, you're quite right. It's a framework framework that helps you think about things and uh, it's certainly done that for my organization thank you very much everybody. thank you Matthew I love the way you you always uh, hit home for me like the kind of magic of social accounting which is about the stakeholder the stakeholders driving that improvement um which yeah it's so fundamental that's brilliant thank you um I would like to just to give you a, a bit of a pause now and a chance to ask any questions of, of Anne or Matthew um please just put your hand up and, and we'll come to you or you can put pop some questions in the chat as well if that's easier does anybody want to ask anything at this stage sandra hi <laughs> hi um I, thanks very much it's really interesting and i'm really i really like the idea of the, the social audit panel that sounds great um i was going to just clarify something um about the stuff that anne said um at one stage you said it's about looking at the organization as a whole and it's only looking at an organization not a project but then afterwards you said you might only look at part of the organization so uh that that was one of the questions i'm not sure which one it is and the other question i have is is there is there uh, a way in which you you talked about your anticipated outcomes what your objectives are your you know all the things that you're working towards is there a way of looking for unanticipated outcomes, whether they might be negative or positive. So I realize that's a few questions in one, but that's my questions, thanks. Yeah, and apologies. I think what I was trying to, I was trying to say, um, to clarify really is that, I think as Matthew's described, this is about, you start with the organization and its mission and its business plan. So what you're trying to understand is whether you are living up to your values, whether you're delivering on your mission and your objectives and things like that. When I was saying only part of the organization, I was sort of saying, you know, may, maybe you, you might want to start your social accounting by only focusing on one objective. And certainly when, uh, when I did um, social accounts with um, CTAC a number of years ago, we, were, we really wanted to focus on a particular part of our work so we sort of said, you know, we started with the mission and the vision and the values, and we did that. But actually, then we only looked in more detail at work we were doing around one of our uh, organizational objectives. And then the following year, we did the next one. Um, so we sort of chunked it down a bit. So I think we have ways of chunking it down so that you don't have to you know it's that elephant joke isn't it how do you eat an elephant chunk by chunk so actually we have ways of working with you to sort of chunk it down and say right you know this is this is the understanding of this part of our work and actually how can we do social accounting on that does, does that answer your question Sandra it does. And I'm just like I said, there's the, the other question was just about unanticipated outcomes. Oh, sorry. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, Matthew might want to sort of add to this, but I think what that's part of good planning in terms of, you know, planning your social accounting. So it's almost like leaving the door open. And that's why I think it's really important not just to look at stats for social accounting but actually to ask questions that allow people to come back with, you know, things you might not have thought of, um, feedback. So it's in good questionnaire design, perhaps, for example. I don't know, Matthew might want to. Yeah, I, I, I would. Um, 
I suppose an, an example for uh, for us. We used to uh, have almost an exclusive focus on people who themselves have one of these conditions that we work with, and the other folk uh, who kind of came into the centre, you know, husbands, wives, mums, dads, who, who were bringing people for treatment or whatever, we kind of just it, this sounds awful looking back, but we paid them no attention really. We didn't really, as a charity, think of them as uh, an important part of the process. And yet, so it was so social accounting that first threw back at us in a really powerful way that there was this constituency of people uh, to whom we were paying no attention, but who were walking away from our centre having. Uh, taken uh, an awful lot of value and so it it drove us to it was a completely unintended outcome um, and it, I suppose has completely reformatted the way we are as an organization and and though those folk are very much a pivotal part of our work a pivotal part of our funding is to support the whole family now so it's it's kind of changed the shape of what we are, and it was it was just a uh, a spin off really. It was a, a, a series of questions in the social accounting survey that we just chucked in. We hadn't really thought about. Uh, I don't know if that mm. addresses what you were thinking, Sandra. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you, Sandra. Thanks for those questions. Um, I can see a few questions in the chat. Um, Owen's asked about previous examples. There's, there's lots of examples on our website, Owen. Um, and if you wanted to more, know more about the audit side of it in particular, then you know, by all means speak to myself or Anne and we can, we can give you some, uh, some of our experience of that. Um, John has asked, uh, as a relatively new enterprise, what stage would be the, most, the best place to start? Um, I can briefly answer that if you like. I mean, I think I think it would be fair to say that it's the sooner the better, really, in terms of getting the the bones of of your social accounting framework in place um, and kind of take it slowly and be proportionate with that. So um, for a new organisation, it, it might just be simply really getting to grips with what your vision, mission, values are, and and then building on that over time and and starting to do that feedback, uh, get that stakeholder feedback. Um, and mapping your impacts and, and, you know, building that in over time so it doesn't become a, a huge elephant that you've got to eat all in one go further down the line. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else wants to add anything to that. Anne, yeah. I think I was, it's really interesting. So we, in Greater Manchester, we've just done a survey of social enterprise organisation. Well, not we, not me personally, but there has been one done. And one of the, the feedbacks there was for new organisations, impact is just not something they're thinking about. about. So they're, they're sort of thinking about all the starting stuff type things. You know, how do I recruit the right staff? Um, what are my income streams? Where are my customers? All of those sorts of things. And, and they completely forget the so what question. And it's not until they're a bit more mature that they're coming back and saying, oh, well, now we've done it. We want to know whether it's making a difference or not. So, so I think I agree with Karen, you, you know, the earlier you can think about it, because you could, you know, the, the better really, it's okay, to, you know, to grow and develop and things like that, but you could be going completely down the wrong track quite a long way before you understand whether this is actually useful, uh, and whether you're achieving that impact, and then actually you're using your social accounting to make adjustments, improvements as you go along. Um, I hope that's helpful, John. Thanks, Andy. Dave wants to come in as well. Yeah, I was just going to reinforce that because it, I, I find um, working in the voluntary sector and perhaps helping to establish some groups, often people aren't very clear about what they're what they're about. Um, and for me, the just doing the first stage, even if an organisation thinks about this and they and they look at the resources that we've got and they go through the first stage. That's incredibly valuable because to, to really get to grips with your, your mission value values and uh, etc is is really, really important to be effective. And I think once you've done that, 
and then you've you've ended up with well, what outcomes are you looking for? It's it's then such a much easier thing to it then then say well it'd be great if we knew we were achieving those and it there's a natural progression then but I'd say with a new social enterprise um, get that sorted that first stage as early as you can I, th I think I think to put the impact measurement thoughts amongst your team it's a great opportunity for your team to get together and to really come to grips with what you're doing um, and to think about what the outcomes are that you're looking for um, and that, that will really change your, your organisation as well as uh, lay the great foundation for doing some impact measurement. Yeah, thanks, Dave. I'd absolutely agree with that. And hopefully that some of that addresses Catherine's, Catherine's point there as well about the level and scope of social accounting uh, does definitely depend on, on the resources that you have available. It's going to be really different what you might throw at a social accounting process in a big housing organisation, for example, than what you might be able to do in, in a small, very small uh, social enterprise um, so yeah that's definitely be proportionate for sure um, I can't see if they're at just looking if there are any other questions in there does anybody else I was, want I was just gonna say to add to that 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 often there's that barrier to overcome um, in in terms of getting the organization to take this on because the the cost uh, and I think the you know the option uh, it's almost like permission to start small and just to take a portion of what you're doing is a really good way because then you can prove the the value of of the impact measurement uh, and when then higher up your more senior management team perhaps see the value because they give you permission to do a little bit of work they'll see it's worth investing in doing a, um, a slightly larger one as as time goes on so not to be put off by the the end result thinking everyone's got to produce this wonderful report like Matthew does but he's taken 15 years to get there um, and, and he's sold out on it. Whereas you, you might be struggling um, to, to, to sell it or we'll start small and, and you'll, people will see the value. Brilliant, thank you. I can see a couple of more questions just, just gone in there now. Um, if we just take about another three minutes on the, on the questions and then we'll move into the breakout rooms. Uh, this is quite a biggie, I think, from Angus. Uh, how does all this align with the with sustainability, social value, ESG? Um, I don't know if, if Anne or uh, Lisa or anyone wants to just quickly touch on that, and then that's maybe something we can follow up on um, in the breakout rooms, perhaps. Shall I jump in? Um, thanks, Karen. Um, thanks, Angus, for the question. As Anne said, you know, the social, we often use a, sh a shorthand for social, environmental and economic and have been for 20 years before we're thinking very broadly in terms of the sustainability agenda. So it's embedded in that way um, in terms of our, our thinking of an approach to the social accounting and audit model. Um, increasingly, and we have colleagues in our sister organization in India who are, if you like, leading the way in this work, um, are aligning the social accounting and audit work that they do to, um, to the SDGs, um, to sustainable development goals. And that links very closely to the work and the structures and the environment in which they're working in. But it's also given us um, examples of what works and how that works and, and testing and developing frameworks of how they are using the, the indicators, the information that they're collecting specifically around SDGs and how that can contribute to um, our social accounting framework. And I think this also demonstrates what Matthew and Anne have been stressing. It's a framework. We've got to do this, how we report and how we measure and how we consider the specifics will use different tools and how then can we can choose and reflect those to best fit our organization and our communities um, and our environments so it's I think it's we're integrated there um, and we're we're looking for new tools we've had some some of these types of discussions a couple of of um, sessions as well where we've um, shared tools and examples that um, that others are using 
so that they are embedding the sustain sustainability agenda into their activity and making sure that it's included in their reports. When you ask a question about the monetization, I see that coming in. Um, well, there's a whole lot of different views on there. So, you know, we could extend this conversation um, much longer. Um, I wonder, Matthew, whether you may have a particular view, because of course we have monetization examples and tools, but it needs to be relevant. And I am going to ask you, Matthew, if you want to just make a comment on that. I don't think we should let that go past. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, yeah I'm not drawn to monetization, Angus, and uh, I, 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 don't generally seek to do so. For example, if we said part of what the NMC is about is keeping people out of hospital, it, it's too trite and simplistic to talk about the cost of a blue light trip to hospital, the, the cost of an overnight in A&E and all of that. That's, that's not really the impact of going to hospital, is it? It's horrible. It's upsetting. It's scary. Um, it's disruptive of family life um, and monetization of things tends to trivialize what I've just described. Yeah, all of us know what it's not a monetary experience. It's just a horrible thing. And we're, as I say, scared and upset and in pain and, and all of those things. So I, my view, thanks for giving me the opportunity, Lisa, is monetization is a dangerous is probably too strong a word but i'll, I'll use it is a, is a dangerous path to uh, slavishly follow thank you matthew um i think we're going to need to quickly get into our breakout rooms if that's okay um we can carry on some discussions in that so simply in the breakout rooms we're going to think about what some of the barriers and benefits to social accounting might be and we're going to try and arrange them so you have a, a director with you in your uh, breakout rooms just to guide the discussion. Um, I think we can probably do till five two maybe, and um, and then uh, we'll have five minutes just to round up at the end. <laughs>
I'm really sorry to uh, bounce people. No, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for uh, for those really useful sessions. Uh, I know we got into some some of the real nitty gritty in, in our session. So yeah, um, we're probably running out of time to kind of to, to go into any of that really. But like I say, thank you, and and I hope some of those discussions were useful, and you were able to ask a few more questions and, uh, and and you know think this through a little bit more we do just want to leave you with um a bit of a plug for uh, a couple of other sessions that we've got but we've got a slide on with some of the the details on with the dates and things um we have uh, our annual gathering coming up in may um which is going to focus on well-being and social accounting um so hopefully a really useful one um you know so much of of any um VCSE organisations uh, work has an impact on well-being uh, and also considering well-being within your organisation and the importance of well-being for the well uh, for the good management of, a, of an organisation as well. So that is on the 20th of May in Liverpool. So tickets are available and we're offering some discounts for um, for small organisations as well so that it's more accessible for everyone. Um, and also um, we have a two day Prove and Prove account session um, coming up in uh, June, uh, well, end of June, beginning of July. Um, so that really, if you, if you go to that two day session, that will probably set you up pretty well for, for tackling social accounting within your organisation. You'll get everything you need, lots of time for us to uh, chat through your own circumstances and some of the own, your own challenges and, and help you to work through some of that and go away the other side of that hopefully confident in um, tackling social accounting within your organization so please do consider booking on that we'd love to see you there um does anybody else want to add anything any final comments okay well it's 12 o'clock um oh dave yep yeah. <laughs> i was just gonna say to for those that are new um do look at the website we've got a lot of information there and resources that you can pull on Great, thank you. Uh, once again, thank you very much, everyone uh, who's joined us. Um, we hope to see you again uh, and look out for more of these uh, hour long um, roadshow style uh, events that we run online. Um, we'll definitely be holding more in the future. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yes, lovely to see. Oh, Hilary's gone. <laughs> <laughs>
and um, I might send them the one of the ones. So the, the other John, the guy from the women's organization was asking where to start. So we were talking about impact mapping. So I might send out the impact mapping sheet yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Okay. Good. Thank yeah, you. Right. No worries. See you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.